Hi guys, welcome back to another Star Wars video. Hope you're all having a very good day today. Today's video is my personal thoughts on The Mandalorian Episode 1. I'm going to start straight away to say that I thought it was absolutely amazing. I'm going to give it 10 out of 10. J just so you know how the video is going to go, I'm going to talk very highly of the show it's it's just a dream come true. I've been waiting for a live action Star Wars show for the last 35 years, I want to say. And I think I was roughly around about four or five when I fell in love with Star Wars. And I just remember all the sci-fi sci shows coming up on the TV was definitely not Star Wars. Maybe some of it tried to be. Shows like Star Trek and sort of Babylon 5 and all that sort of stuff. I mean... I wasn't a fan of Babylon 5. I did watch Star Trek uh, Next Generation. And I watched it because I couldn't have a Star Wars TV show, if I'm going to be completely honest. And that was the only reason I kind of watched it, really. It was near, near to a Star Wars TV show. And that's all we had back in the 80s. We didn't really have anything else. We had briefly two Ewok movies straight for, to TV, and that's that's what we got live action wise, and obviously some cartoons, which was droids and Ewoks throughout that the eighties. But nothing which we all really wanted. We all wanted something like the original trilogy, like a New Hope, Empire Strikes Back, Return of the Jedi, which we never got. So now we have the Mandalorian and. Watching it the other night, I just, I couldn't actually believe what I was seeing. I got quite emotional through it, if I'm honest. I didn't cry or anything like that, but I got quite teary. I mean, it's it was just a, it was such a dream to see this. And it just started out perfect. I, unfortunately, I watched all the trailers, I watched all the teasers, I watched every single thing I possibly could, so... The, the f most of episode one has the, the a lot of footage from the trailers, especially at the very beginning of the episode. We have already seen. There was also bootleg footage from Star Wars Celebration as well. So I have pretty much seen quite the larger parts of the of episode one. Well, they're calling it chapter when they're doing it in chapters. But from from the get go. The Mandalorian comes to a planet looking for a bounty, and it's kind of like a snow planet, almost like a Hoth-like looking planet. We don't know any of the names of the planets, which was something that I was a tiny bit disappointed with, if I'm honest. I, As I, as I said, I'm still going to give this 10 out of 10 because I, I adore this, this, this show. It's just absolutely amazing. But there, I just have a few bits that... I wasn't as fond of, but it didn't ruin it for me. So basically, we don't have names for all the planets, but I'm hoping very soon that we'll get a Mandalorian guide that will come out and tell us who the creatures are and who the uh, where, where the planets are and etc. So the Mandalorian arrives on this ice planet. Again, we're not too sure of what the name of the planet is. So he comes to the planet and he goes after a bounty, which is in like a cantina type looking place with all sorts of creatures etc on there and he comes across two thugs he takes them out and comes across a blue alien creature type of thing I'm, again I'm not too sure of the species but the language that he speaks which is just a standard sort of English language just doesn't really match the way he looks, in my personal opinion. I think he should have had some sort of alien language with subtitles or something on there. And the human-looking thugs should have had sort of an, an uh, English language type of thing instead. And I think that would have suited it better. I mean, it's not a massive thing, but it's kind of like just picking at it very slightly, which would have made that scene completely perfect for me. I do like the humour. I didn't like the humour in The Last Jedi. I thought that kind of ruined it. The humour was in like the wrong 
places throughout the movie. But in this show, it actually works pretty well. I mean, the, the humour's not over the top. It's just here and there, which is just perfect. I thought the graphics were just just amazing. I like jaw-dropping graphics. The creature that was kind of like a walrus creature that came through the ice to attack the Razor Crest was just something that you would get out of a massive big budget movie. That's how good the graphics were. I love the Razor Crest. It's now my favorite ship. I everything about it is perfect. I love it when it shoots across when you're uh, you know in a scene and then you just hear it it just sounds amazing there were a few errors here and there which i would assume that it'd be like the negative of the film maybe being put back to front i'm not entirely sure how it was actually filmed whether it was filmed in digital or not or actual film but sometime through some of the scenes the Mandalorian's shoulder armor seems to swap from one side to the other so he actually has he has one sort of like dark brown colored shoulder armor on one side and then on the on the other side he has kind of like a gray armor with a blue stripe going through it in some of the scenes the blue armor's on that side, and the grey armor on the shoulder is on the other side. But again, I'm assuming that's the negative being put round the wrong way. And it happens in several scenes throughout. Now, there's also another bit that bugged me, is that when he gets his new Mandalorian shoulder armor, which is in the special metal that the Mandalorians use, it was actually... He actually had that shoulder armor when he was in the Razor Crest flying to that area. There's a scene just before it where you see him, the back of him, riding the, the Razor Crest, and you actually see him with that armor before, which it bugs me, bugs me a little bit, but I can see right through that. It's you know, I was just trying to like get on with it, but uh, I, I did. I I noticed these these things, and sometimes they bug me a little bit. Other than those tiny bits, I personally think that the whole of the show is absolutely amazing. The sets are brilliant. The CGI is brilliant. Puppetry, the acting's brilliant as well. Pedro Pascal, I just love that guy. I think he's absolutely perfect. Back in my mind, I I was thinking, oh, when are we going to see his face type of thing? And obviously Mandalorians don't ever take their helmets off. I'm assuming we might see him at one point throughout the show. Maybe it's the very, very last episode of the entire series we might get to see his face. I'm not too sure. But at the moment, I actually like the, you know, the, the hidden face, the, the secrecy of it all, of what who he actually is. I quite like that. I think they should keep the mask on throughout if I'm going to be completely honest and I did also like the little flashback that we got of his of his past they didn't actually show it but the scenes that they showed in the flashback must be Clone Wars era because and it I would imagine it would probably date back to Revenge of the Sith part of the Clone Wars uh, because I because it's at least 30 years ahead he must be at least around about 45-ish, uh, depending how the timeline's been set out. But at a guess, I'd probably say that would probably fit his age now, which kind of makes sense. I also really liked the new character, the um, Ugnaught character. Um, I'm assuming it's pronounced Quill, maybe. I'm not entirely sure. His name has actually hasn't been mentioned at all through episode one. I did like the new saying, I have spoken. It seems to be a now a new catchphrase everyone seems to be using, which is really good fun. He kind of reminded me of kind of like a Yoda type character and that he's going to look out for the Mandalorian, which I I also really, really love. I also loved the IG-11 scene. I, A lot of us loved IG-88 as part of the Bounty Hunters from Empire Strikes Back. And to see him actually move and talk it's 
it's just a dream come true. I mean, it's it's just absolutely amazing. And that particular scene was, it's just like the lasers f- flying uh, flying past when they're basic hiding behind taking cover and they knock down the door with the laser cannon and then we see the big surprise and the big surprise was massive spoilers so if you've got this far and you think you don't want to know any more about this maybe you should go ahead a few minutes but we now have a baby Yoda now, I know it's not Yoda, but it's Yoda, Yoda species. Now, I, as far as, I'm, as I know, I feel like I know pretty much everything about Star Wars here and there. I don't think they've mentioned this, the Yoda species. As, I don't think they have. I'm 98% sure that they haven't mentioned it. We've, we've seen one of Yoda's species um, in The Phantom Menace. But apart from that, those are the only two that we've ever seen. And now this new Yoda species, and it was literally the cutest. I don't sort of get fussed by cute scenes, but it was really cute, I'm going to be honest with you. And I was surprised that he got rid of IG-11. IG I was hoping that throughout The Mandalorian, he would gather teammates throughout the thing and have a whole crew by the end of it and I was hoping IG-11 would be part of his crew along with Cara Dune and QL or however now you pronounce his name because they've made such a big deal with the posters as with all four of them on there the Funko Pops and the Black Series Star Wars figures as well and to have IG-11 being taken out pretty much within five minutes it was a hero- heroic scene, and that's very co- cool, and we get to understand the Mandalorian, just that little bit more of how he acts, etc. But I was a bit disappointed with that. I wanted IG-11 to be his sidekick or part of his crew and to go out with the rest of the missions, the rest of the stories with him. So that, you know, another little thing that got me. But again, I keep saying it. it, it I still think the show's amazing. I've seen it five times now. That's how obsessed I am with it. Uh, I hope IG-11 does come back in some way, even if it is to come back to seek revenge on the Mandalorian. I would think that would be absolutely fantastic. One other thing that I was was quite confused about how I felt about it was the music. I The music was actually very, very good, but there was some time when they're writing the, the, the Blurgs to get to the sort of the, the bounty where we see IG-11 and the Yoda species, it, it just didn't really fit the scene for some reason. I, I, I've watched a lot of other reviews and stuff like that, and they feel, they said it exactly the same the way I felt. It kind of turned into Rocky um, music all of a sudden, and it didn't really quite fit the scene. I'm not saying it's bad. I, I'm, I find myself humming this theme tune walking around the house um, every now and again. So it's good music, but I just didn't really felt that it fitted the scene. But it it was still good. Uh, You can now get the whole of episode one's soundtrack uh, on Spotify or on YouTube as well. So that's definitely worth looking out for if you want to listen to the whole thing. But that is my thoughts. It's not really much of a review, I'm afraid. I'm not really very good at reviews as you could possibly tell Uh, i just want to give you my thoughts and and hopefully some of you guys will comment down below and tell me your favorite scenes and what bits you liked or you didn't like throughout it and are you happy with the show so far are you looking forward to episode two which gets released on friday so we've got two episodes this week and thereafter it's every friday up until the 27th of december which will be the last episode of season one and they are currently filming season two at the moment. So just more stuff to be excited about Star Wars. I'm assuming we'll get it round about the same sort of time. I imagine we'll probably get it in November again, possibly. I, I could be wrong, but it gives us a good year of waiting for it. Thank you very much for watching, guys. I hope you all have a good rest of the day and I will see you on the next video. Take care. Bye bye.